in order to subscribe to my channel please click here or click here please share comment and like my videos and channel hey guys this is Gaurav welcome to SAS with ServiceNow I'm starting a new series for ServiceNow change management tutorial if you want to learn how change management application works in ServiceNow as an ITIL user, as a ServiceNow administrator, or as a ServiceNow developer, then this is the right tutorial for you. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to implement change management application in ServiceNow for your customers and clients. You will be able to understand how change management process works in ServiceNow and what are different features of change management application in ServiceNow. A lot of the content of this tutorial has references from ServiceNow documentation. Let me show you what will be the journey of this course. We will start with what is change and change management. Then we will learn about change management application in ServiceNow. We will learn about change management plugins. And then we will learn about change types and their workflow. We will talk about change creation in which we will try to create some changes and see how they work. We will learn about processing change request. As you create a change, it goes via different steps. We will see what are those different steps and how do you process a change. Then we will talk about change management configuration. We will talk about standard change catalog. We will learn about change schedules, change risk and impact, change conflict, change approval and policies and in the last we will learn about cab workbench the first question which comes into our mind is what is a change a change is an addition modification or removal of any authorized planned or supported service or service component that could have an effect on IT services in order to explain to you about change management, I will always take the example of our own ServiceNow system. As you know, ServiceNow is being used by different customers and end users. If you have to add any feature or maybe you have to remove any feature from ServiceNow, however, it might happen that some customers are still using those functionalities. And you, if you will remove it without informing those customers, then there is an impact so that kind of addition and removal is a change which can impact your end user. What is change management? Change management is standard procedures and practice for managing requests in an effective manner in an effort to drastically minimize the risk and impact the change can have on business operations. You might have multiple changes for different IT services in your organization. We should have some standard procedures and practice and managing these changes makes change management. Change management can help to manage risk that comes after implementing a change. A well-planned and structured change management process provides significant business benefits. Change management process. Change management process includes these activities which follow a sequence. The first activity is to create and log the change request. In this activity, a request for change is created by an individual or any group for the steps to be implemented for a particular application or configuration item. Then we have review change. In this activity, the created change is reviewed and prioritized by change authorities. Next we have change evaluation. Evaluation of change is to assess the impact, risk and benefits to IT services in order to avoid unnecessary disruption to business operations. 
Then we have change approvals. Change request requires authorization and approvals prior to the implementation. Each change request has to be approved by all concerned approvers before implementation of the change. This ensures that all the stakeholders have properly reviewed the changes and then approved them. Once we are done with all review and approvals, then we have implementation. That means implement activity. Change will be implemented by implementer group or implementer as per the schedule of the change. The last activity of this process is validation. Once change is implemented by implementer, then change has to be validated whether it was properly implemented or not and making sure that it has not broken any other component of service for which change was implemented. Different IT teams which have some dependency on this IT service will perform those validations. Change management application in ServiceNow. All these process activities should be tracked and automated with a service management tool. And that tool we have is ServiceNow. ServiceNow developed an application that is change management application to manage change management process effectively. The application has different features which supports change management process. So if you want to make your change management process more efficient, and if you're using ServiceNow change management, then you will be able to govern change management process properly in your organization. As you can see, it says change management application in ServiceNow provides a systematic approach to control the life cycle of all changes, facilitating beneficial changes to be made with minimum disruption to IT services. This is our change management application in ServiceNow. Let's take a look in my personal developer instance. If I go to my personal developer instance, type change in application navigator, you will see change application. You can also see a lot of modules under change management application. So these are the modules we have in change management. We will start with first module when you will click this button, it is the module is create new. This module will open a new form for change record. You can create a new change by this particular option. Here you have a screen and you can create different types of changes. Next module talks about open changes, then we have close. So this will show you the list of changes, all open change records you have in your ServiceNow instance. This will show you all closed changes. This will show you all list of all changes which are in your instance. Then we have overview. This will show you a dashboard, which will give you an overview of all the changes, at least the top metrics you can track in your ServiceNow instance for all your changes. As you can see, we have these metrics like today's emergency changes, critical change open, overdue changes, changes waiting for approvals. So this is what you can also customize these dashboards as per your business requirement. Then we have standard change section. Here you, you have some, uh, some configurations for standard changes. Then we have some section for change advisory board. This is for cab workbench and all cab related uh, options. Then we have one section where it talks about schedules all the change schedules like maintenance schedules, blackout schedules, any default schedules, that's something you can mention here. Then you have change policy section where we have change approval policies, some definitions. And then we have administration where as an administrator, you can perform some configuration changes. Like you have change properties, you can mention risk conditions, conflict properties, standard change properties, and then ATF suites. 
this last option, last module is related to automation testing framework in which ServiceNow has already given you predefined test cases, tests for your uh, test, uh, for testing of your change management module. Change management plugins. You can enable various change management features with the help of plugins. These are the available change management plugins in your ServiceNow instance, which you can enable for getting different features. Like we have change management core, ITSM roles, business stakeholder, change management state model, collision detector, change risk calculator, change schedule, risk assessment, standard change catalog, bulk CI changes, mass update CI, and then we have approval policy. There is one more plugin that is related to CAB Workbench. Many of these plugins are already activated in the base system. Like I have a New York instance. So a lot of these plugins should already be activated and those features must be enabled. However, these are some plugins like mass update CI, risk assessment, and bulk CI changes are inactive in base system. That means not all these plugins are already activated. It depends if your customer or client is looking for these kinds of features like bulk CI or risk assessment, then you can also enable these plugins. Let's check out these plugins in the instance. I will go for plugins and I will click here. This will show me all the plugins we can get from ServiceNow. So if I type for change management, you can see we have these plugins like best practice bulk CI changes. Change risk calculator is already enabled. You can see it says installed. Then we have change management approval policy that is also says installed. ATF test cases, CAV workbench, it is also installed. Change schedule, change schedule foundation, collision detector. We have color picker as well. Then we have change management core, mass update CI, all those change management plugins. So if you want to get these features and if you have maybe prior version and these plugins are not enabled in your instance, then you can uh, enable them manually. But if you have your new instance like New York instance, or Orlando instance, then you will see that these plugins will already be enabled. And the plugins which are not enabled, as I mentioned, like this particular plugin. And if your customer is looking for the feature like mass update CI, in that case, you can also install this plugin. Change types. Change management supports three types of service changes, which are also described by ITIL standard change, emergency change, and normal change. These are kind of categories of changes which have been categorized as per their scenario of implementation. The first change type we have is standard change. Standard change is a pre-authorized change, which is a low risk change and follows specified procedures or work instruction. These types of changes can be implemented frequently as they have repeatable steps of implementation. There's no cab approval required for these types of changes. They are defined templates which are pre-approved and can be used to implement via standard changes. Every change type has their associated workflow in ServiceNow, which means that they have different activities involved as per their type of change. Similarly, we have standard change workflow. This is the workflow for a standard change in which change gets auto approved and then moves to schedule date state and then to implement state. It goes to review, also create a standard change task as per the standard change template. And that's it. You are done with the standard change creation. 
and the process. The next change type is emergency change. This type of change is required to be implemented as soon as possible. It is basically required to resolve high priority issues. Emergency change does not follow a complete normal change life cycle. They are high priority changes which bypass group and peer review and approvals and move directly to authorized state for CAB approvals. Emergency changes are also considered post changes, which means change record is created after implementation. These implementations are performed due to high priority and impact of the issue in production. As an example, if you have an application, maybe database is not available for that particular application. And database team came into the picture and they mentioned they have to add some space to the database so that application can work. Now adding a database, adding the memory is, is kind of a change. But they have to add it right away so that it can fix the issue in production and we can save the impact to the users. In that case, we don't need any kind of documented approval right away. We can get the, we can get the verbal approval just from the higher leadership and just implement the change. And later on, we can create the change with the same date and time and it can move with the same steps and activities and approvals once it is done and everything can be approved and change can be closed. Emergency change also has their defined workflow in ServiceNow. You can see it involves different activities in the workflow as well. You can see it says a lot of approvals, rejections, rejection notification, on hold. We will learn about this workflow when we will try to create a change in later sections. The last type of change we have is normal change. Normal change is a type of change which does not fall under standard or emergency change situation. It follows a complete life cycle of change in which we have a process which requires two level of approvals before being implemented, reviewed and closed. It is a planned change which can have impact as well. It requires complete assessment and approvals. These type of changes are normally implemented to improve the service. They also presented in CAB meetings for further assessment and approvals. And they also have a defined maintenance window. So if you know that you are going to implement something for your ServiceNow application, you can define a window, a maintenance window, which you can also communicate to your end users and then you can implement or whatever feature you want to add, whatever upgrade you want to do for your ServiceNow instance, you can do that. We also have workflow for normal change in ServiceNow. You can see a lot of activities involved in normal change process as well. This will also follow a complete life cycle and different activities as part of the process. Let's talk about change form and its fields. A change request records the detailed information about the change to be implemented, such as reason of the change, priority, risk of implementing the change, type of change, and change category. When you open a new change record in ServiceNow, you will see this form with these fields. At the top, you will see the process flow, which we have in ServiceNow change management. The different states we have in change, in change are new, assess, authorize, scheduled, implement, review, closed, and canceled. The first field we have on change form is number of change record which will be created. Next, we have reported by. 
the user who has requested for this change. Then we have category. Here you have to select then whatever change you are implementing for any particular CI. You have to select the category of that CI. That means configuration item. Then we have service. Service for which this change will be implemented. That is, you will select here. Configuration item means any application, any server, any router for which change will be implemented. You have to select that particular CI item over here. Then we have priority. What should be the priority of this change? Whether it's high, low, medium. You have to mention the risk. That what exactly the risk for implementing this change? It's a low risk change, high risk change or moderate risk. Then you have to mention the impact of this change. That what will be the impact once this change will be implemented? This field shows type of change. So we talked about different types of change like normal, standard, and emergency. Those types will be shown here. This is state field, which shows the status of the change, different stages of the change record. Conflict status. We might get different conflicts in ServiceNow change management. That means for the same CI, you might have uh, uh, different changes or different change record uh, in the similar time maybe. In that case, this will show you the conflict status, whether it has run or not. Conflict last run, if it has run, then what was the last run? Assignment group, the implementer group of the change, the team who will implement with this change, who are responsible to implement this change. Assigned to, the person who will implement the change, the user. Details of the change, short description and description. You can mention the details of the change. What exactly, what kind of change you are going to implement that you can mention in short description and description. We have this section that's called planning details of the change. Here in this section, you will have some fields in which you have to mention planning details of the change. First field we have like justification that why exactly you want to implement this change. That's something you have to mention in justification field. Then we have implementation plan. You should have some steps to implement the change. It can be technical steps as well. That detailed plan has to be mentioned in this particular field. Then you have risk and impact analysis. If you think if there are some risk or whatever impact analysis you have done, you can mention in this particular field. Then we have backout plan. There might be some situation that when, once, once you are implementing a change, it is not working as expected. So the best approach to minimize or save the impact is roll back the change. So what kind of backout plan you would have if your change will fail? So that is something you have to mention in this particular field. Then we have test plan. How exactly you will validate this change? What are the test plan for this change? Thorough validation and test plan. Next section we have in change record is schedule. Schedule of the change has some fields related to the date and time and some schedules of that particular change to be implemented. So the first field we have is start date and time of change implementation. So when exactly you're planning to implement that change, start time, that's something you will mention in this particular field. Then you have planned end time. You have cab required. Do we really need cab for this particular change that you can check that box. Then we have cab date. In which cab meeting you want to add this particular change to be reviewed. Then we have actual start date. That when exactly you actually start this implementation that you can mention here. Then we have actual end date. 
cap delegate if you want to delegate someone so that he can represent yourself for this particular change and then cab recommendation once you are done in, with cab meeting in that cab meeting cab people or the cab uh, authori authorized people they are giving you some recommendations in that case you can mention those notes here it might happen that you're not joining that meeting but your delegate is joining and later if you're checking this change you can see the comments over here next section we have is conflicts this particular section shows you the conflict of the change involved. So if you have a CI, which is part of this change implementation, and you have some other changes as well for the same CI, maybe for the similar time or duration, in that case, you might see those changes over here when you will run the conflict. So this section will show you all the changes, all the conflicts detected you will see in this particular list. Then we have notes section. Notes section, it's, it's kind of like an idle for idle users. You can put some comments, you can put work notes while implementing the change, before the change, it's totally up to you. And if you want to add a watch list, work notes list, you can also add it. And the last section we have is closure information. In this section, we talk about, we mention closure details of the change after implementation. We have field like closure code and close notes. Service now change process flow. In the last section, you saw the process flow on the top of the change form. When you create a change, it moves to different states until it is closed or cancelled. So we have different states in this change management process flow in ServiceNow. First state we have is new. That's a default option when you will create a new change record. Then we have SS. SS is basically the stage where you assess the quality of the change Whatever information you have mentioned the change, you assess the impact, you assess the risk. That is what we have, assess state. Then we have authorize. That means when that change will be moved to approval stage, then it will show as authorize. That means it is under approval process. Next state we have is scheduled. Scheduled means change is approved and now it is awaiting for implementation. That means everything is approved, but now the plan date has not come yet. So it is waiting for implementation. Then we have implement. That means change is being implemented. So the person who is implementing the change, he can change the state to implement. That means I have started implementing this change. Then we have review state. Review is basically results of implemented change. So once you are done with implementation, you have to review the change, whether everything is working as expected and change was implemented properly. There's, there, there are no issues, uh, nothing has been broken and everything is working as expected after a change is implemented. And the last state we have is closed. That is, change is complete. You can mention the close notes and close codes and you're done with the change. There's another state which is apart from closed that if you want to cancel the change, that means change is no, it's, we don't have to implement it further. We have to cancel it because of some other reasons. In that case, you can cancel the change. Maybe you didn't get the proper approvals. In those cases, you will be able to cancel the changes. Change creation. Change records can be created by different ways. You can create a change from new option under change application. You can also create a change from incident on problem records. You can create the change from a CI. You can create a change from standard change catalog. You can also create a change by copying existing change.
let's take a look in ServiceNow instance. If you will type here change, the first option to create a change is from here. On the change application, you will see this first module. If you will click here, this will show you options to create change. Normal change, emergency. If I will click here, normal change, this will open up the new record and I can create the change. Then I can create it from existing records like problem or incident. So I will go to incident. I will try to open existing incident. In order to create the change directly from incident record, you have to right click here. And you will see these options. Create normal change, create standard change, create emergency change. So you can create changes from existing records as well, like incident and problem. Now, how can you create a change from a CI? Let's look for a CI. So I have this CMDB. Maybe I will do configuration. I will go to any application. I will or maybe I will do one thing. I will select this one and you will see this option here. When you will click here, you can see add to new change request, add to existing change request. So if I click here, add to new change request, you will see it will open a, a new record with the same configuration item and I can create this change with the help of CI. Now, how can you create a change via standard change catalog? We can do it. You will go to change. On the change, you will have standard change catalog. If you will click here, you will see all these templates. Let's click here. When you will click that, you will be able to create a new change record with this template which you selected. So here we have replace printer toner. I will click here and now you will see change record. You can see it has already selected type as standard. Some of the fields are also read only and it has already some data. You can see implementation plan, backout plan, test plan. Now these are standard changes which we were talking about. Then you can also copy existing change record. That means you have to go to open change. Maybe we can go to this change. You should see an option to copy this change. When you, when you will right click on the top, you will see this option called copy change. And when I will click this button, you will see new form with all the data you have in that change. However, this is a new change. I have not submitted this change yet. So this is how you can create different types of changes with different ways. Let's create all three types of changes and see how their workflow works. This is my personal developer instance. In order to create the change, we will not use our administrative account. We will impersonate with another user. So as of now, you can see here, the profile is idle user. This idle user has idle access, that means idle role, so that he can create the change. We'll talk about roles in details about change management in later sections. So let's create three different types of changes and see how exactly they proceed further. So we will click here. So we have this change module. That means this idle user can see this change module and he can see these options as an idle user. So I have this create new button. When you will click this create new button, you will see these three options, normal change, standard change and emergency change. We will click on this first. So we will create a normal change. Once you will click on this normal change button, 
you will see it will automatically select normal. You can also change it to emergency, but standard cannot be selected because standard has a predefined template. They are already pre-approved changes. So you don't need, you will not be able to select it here. But if you want to add any third choice or any other choice or type of the change in your organization, then it's totally up to you. You can add it, you can make the workflow and, and whether you want to hide it or you want to show it, it's totally up to you as per your business requirement. You can see requested by is automatically selected. We have this category. This is the category of CI for which we have to implement the change. So we will select it. Let's see, we have this software. So we will select the software and here we will select maybe web. Let's see if I get something with web. Maybe I will select, I will try to search. Uh, so this is for the service for which we are going to implement the change. So it is SAP Enterprise Services. Okay, let's select SAP now. And here I can select SAP. So this is a configuration item. So let's say um, I have to implement a change uh, on, on this database. This is SAP ORA01. Uh, it has selected priority, uh, risk, moderate impact. Conflict, I think we have not run the conflict yet. Here I can give the assignment group. So maybe I will assign it to database team if I can find, yes, do we have database here? Um, then here I can just uh, mention the short description. So this, this, is, uh, this is a demo change demo normal change that's it we have all these fields now if you will implement in your organization or for your customers or clients you have to make sure that these some of these fields should be mandatory else you will not be able to govern your changes properly service now has not given them mandatory because like they don't know that what fields should be mandatory for your as per your organization. Maybe you will add any other field or so. Maybe you will rename them. So they don't know. So they have not, you, you can see they have not made any field as mandatory for now. You can create the change even if you don't fill this data, you can create the change. So here we will do the justification. So I think we already talked about these fields. So I'm not putting these data for now. So I will just mention random letters. That's it. Here I have schedule. Now for schedule, I can do just a future date. So I have this, uh, I think let's take the future date. I think this is IST right now. Let me check. I think, okay, it's selected. I have to select my instance IST. Okay, so I have selected the IST time. Here I can uh, maybe, currently it's 11.38 AM. I can do 11. 40 and then I can end this change maybe 11 45 uh, do we need cab I will I will say yes uh, when I think uh, cab is needed maybe today that's something you can mention I think it's uh, 15th so I think this is also I need to change because as of now it's staying taking the US time so I will change it it's changed you can see the there was an error the end date must be greater than that that's that's a out of the box error we have um, we don't need to pu put any data here right now and I will now click on save so once you will create it you will see it will be saved first but it will not be submitted at the same time. So I am creating this change. So you can see it has been created. So as of now, it is still a new change and it says scheduling conflict detected. Use scheduling assistant to avoid conflict. Let's check here. You can see on the same database, we have two different changes, two different uh, schedules we have, and that's kind of a conflict we have here. So you can see this is the schedule and this is the global infrastructure. That is what, uh, there's no conflicting uh, change here, but it's, it's not in maintenance window. That means it is saying type of, uh, type of conflict. 
So as of now, it's not in maintenance window. That means you have already specified some maintenance window and, and uh, it, is, it's, it is showing you the conflict. We will not talk about conflict right now because we do have uh, these sections in details later for these topics like conflicts, risk assessment um, and, and roles and, and standard catalog uh, in, in details because in this particular demo, I'm just showing you by creating the change. That's it. Here we have impacted services, SAP enterprise, and here I have the CI which I selected, which is basically uh, affected in this particular change. If you have uh, maybe downstreams or upstreams and you think of that it can also be impacted, you can add those CIs here. Uh, then we have calculate risk. So I can click this button. I can calculate the risk. It says risk condition calculated, insufficient lead time, risk high impact unchanged the reason behind it because i have just selected the day just for i think next uh, next two minutes i think we already passed the time as well because we selected 11 40 and now it's 11 41 a.m uh, but that's okay we will still try to request this change so we will click on request approval and let's see how exactly it goes so now i have sent this change for approval you can see state is read only now type is read only now so, and now it is in SS. That means somebody has to review it. In that case, if you will see at the bottom, we have got these approvers now, Fred, Ludi, all these users. You have these approvers now because an idle user, that means requested by also has to approve it. But anyhow, I think that's part of database group. That means the implemented team first has to approve it. So let's, let's do one thing. Let's approve it. So I will approve it because I'm already idle user, so I can approve it. It's approved. So you can see now this cha uh, state changed to authorize. That means it's an authorized flow right now. So change is approved, but it goes to other approvals. You can see it says cab approver uh, and cab approval as well. Here, what I can do, I will, maybe I will impersonate any, any user and that user maybe just cab approver. Let's try to impersonate this one and impersonate user because that's how you will understand so we will impersonate with this user and we will approve the change so i will go self-service and i should have uh, my approvals i think it's not showing any my approvals to me let me search. Okay, it's in service desk. So you can see I have this change, which we got, uh, which I got for approval. So I will just approve it right now. I approved this change. And now I will go back to my previous user and see my change. So I will just go to history. This is my change. You can see it is approved now and it goes to state schedule. So here I have schedule. Now I have this another state that is implement and when exactly you, have, you select implement, when you actually implement it. So currently we have that time right now. You can see we have, we are in the change window. You can see plans in our approved change window. That's what it is saying. So what I will do, I will change it to implement and I will also put myself here. Idle, because I'm already part of database script. So I will put it here and I will, I think you also have this button here, implement. So it will automatically change the state to implement. That means you have started the implementation. When you will click on implement, you will automatically see the actual start date will automatically show. That means you have changed the state and now you have started the work. That's how it is showing automatically. So for example, once I'm done, I have implemented the change. It also created the two tasks automatically, post implementation testing and implementation. So this is something you have to close first. So let's say I'm going to close these tasks. That means um, first I have this implementation. So I have this planning, implementing. That's fine. I will close this and I will update it. So that task is closed. That means I have implemented. And then I have this one. 
I will go here and I will close this one as well. This is also closed. So the both the tasks are closed because now I am done with the change and now I can close it. Once when I will select the close state, you will see this closer information will become mandatory and I have to select the closure code. Now this is out of the box closure codes. So all the choices you have, these are all out of the box. That means already provided by ServiceNow. If you want to add or customize the choices as per your organization or as per your customer or client, you can also do that. So here I will do successful and I will just mention any close notes I want and that's it. And I will click on close. And you will see it is closed. So change is successfully implemented. No, it says scheduling conflict. I think it is still showing the conflict, but that's okay. We don't need to worry about it. So that's it. We are done with the change. It is closed. We don't need to worry about this change now. Everything was implemented successfully. So this is how you create a normal change. Now let's go to create new again. And this time we will create emergency. I, I, will, I will create standard later. So let's create emergency. Now we talked about emergency that it should be implemented as soon as, possi uh, as, soon as possible. Um, it's kind of an unplanned change. Uh, you can say unplanned change necessary to restore service. So for example, you got the P1 right now and you have to uh, implement the change. Or maybe you have to implement the change after maybe four hours, let's say, maybe because you, you still wanna do it in off hours, but you have to do it today. So this um, type emergency will automatically be selected. I can select the category. So let's, let's take the same uh, uh, CI. So here I can put SAP. So I have SAP Enterprise Service. I will select it and here I will select SAP. So maybe for the same database, I have selected it. Here I will put database planning. Anything I can put right now. Uh, plant start date I can put maybe 11. I, I took 59, it's still showing me use time. That's something I, I need to check again, but that's okay. And then I can do, and I can save this. Once I will save this, it says uh, conflict detected. That's okay. And now I can just click on request approval. When you will click on request approval, it says refresh impacted service has initiated. That's okay. And we we'll see. I hope you saw some difference here. That's the reason I wanted to show you the kind of workflow we have. And let's let's go to the workflow. Because if I talk about the emergency change, and let's try to open another change as well, so at least you will be able to understand the difference. So I will open that change here. I have this closed change. I have this show workflow. So I want to show you both the workflows. Now, uh, this workflow is the is the workflow for the normal change which we created. And this is for emergency change which we are running right now. So now here you can see we, we got approvals for implementer team as well. That means the assignment group. But here you can see no approval is needed. No other approval except cab approval. So it, it directly moved into the cab queue and now you do not have to worry about any other approval. If cab is approving it, that means you are done. So let's impersonate with cab. So I'm sure uh, cab would have that approval request. See, I can approve it. Once I will approve it, I will impersonate with idle user again. And I will just go here and go my history, open our emergency change. So it's approved now. 
So you can see it automatically moved into scheduled state, no further approvals. And here I can just go for implementation. So I can click on implement. That means I have started my implementation. And then I can close this by closing this task and also closing the change similarly. But the only difference we have here is, and you will see the difference if I refresh it, you can see uh, because change is already approved by uh, cab. So it says approved. It should go here. Uh, I think um, approval is here. I have rejection notification. That's I don't have because it's it's approved change. So uh, there's no like this change is not not on hold. So that's that's how this change proceeds. And then we can just uh, I think we can close the change after implementation because it's moves review. That's how this whole change management process works for an emergency change. And this is how we create emergency change. And this, these are all out of the box workflow and process. If you want to customize it as per your business requirement, it's uh, totally up to you. But I've, as ServiceNow always recommend, try to stick to uh, out of the box. But even if you want to change some kind of workflow, because if you have some kind of a different process for your organization, that's still okay. You can still uh, uh, customize it. Uh, but try to, uh, min try to minimize the customization of the basic feature of change management in ServiceNow. Um, so that's what we have for emergency change. Let's create the last change, last type of change we have, that is standard change. So you can see we have this option standard, it says select from available pre-approved changes. That means you have to select uh, the available templates, pre-approved templates. So we have this network standard changes. So maybe I will click here and I have these different type of changes specifically for network standard changes, like add network switch to data center cabinet, maybe change VLAN. So let's click here, VLAN. And you will see it, it will automatically populate all these data. So let's see what kind of approval it, it asks for or, or does it really ask for approval? So um, I have these states, new schedule. You can see the difference. So I have uh, like in, in, in um, normal change, we had new and SS here. We directly have schedule. Let's see what exactly it does. Uh, so I can select uh, SAP enterprise maybe. And here I can select Oracle database maybe. And then I can submit this change. So I have submitted this change. And now I will go for a schedule. So I have to select database team. I also need to first put some schedule. Maybe we have to do it right now. So I will make it, I think it's still taking 28. That's okay. I will save this. Now it says that assignment group is mandatory. So it's done. It is, it still shows me the conflict. Um, that's it. You can see it automatically moved to schedule and then implement no approvals because it is a pre-approved change and that's what standard change is. And even you can understand the type of change like change VLAN on a Cisco Sysport. That means it is a changing of the VLAN. Then why it would need a proper, a complete life cycle or the process of approvals. Or, or there can be multiple scenarios. You might have those scenarios in service now as well, like changing the property or maybe um, maybe just, just doing some configuration changes. In that case, you don't need uh, complete approvals, which you think that it won't impact anything or in your end users. So that's how it's totally up to you. Every organization has their different, uh, different uh, I think, uh, uh, templates for standard change and conditions for standard change. So it's totally up to them. So this is how you create all these three uh, changes, uh, three types of changes. Uh, and, and I think you already saw that how exactly their workflow works. So thanks for watching my video. Have a great day. Wait for second part as well, which I'm, I will be posting soon.